Hey, hello again, everybody. Sebastian here with another Watch of Rome's video. The global patch notes have been released. We are expecting one here in October. So I am here in my Forerunners account. I'm going to show you what is coming and what is not. One of the major uh, updates that is going to go on here is going to be arena that's the, that's going to be the big change especially how things are calculated and how things are going to be reset so now we're going to be expected uh to not only reset every week but there will be a seasonal reset every month so every time that it resets you will get knocked down a tier so if there is a week where you the season resets right at the middle you're going to see the double bump on the tier so just look out for that and plan your battles accordingly specific especially if you want to remain in a specific tier and the reason for this is that it's going to become so essential is because now and uh here uh as you can see here in the in the rankings above my head here is going to see essential for you to try to stay in overlord uh, plat 3 overlord and apex overlord if you want to collect these apex coins and why are these needed because part of the update is going to introduce the apex shop there is where lady alexander will be hanging out you will need to rank up to overlord to eventually get her once you have the forty thousand coins that you need to claim and then there are also going to be soul stones in here for her to then go ahead and awaken her so i think that the one player that has been really pushing really hard in arena to try to fully awaken her she's already at a2 so i have seen an a2 i expect to see her at a3 here very soon there are other rewards here that at least in the patch notes they have said that they will be available here um, including freya's legacy this is actually just like a reskin of the summoning stone that's essentially what it is and you'll, you'll be able to come in here and if you get it you'll be able to switch between those two so that's essentially what the apex shop is going to be offered there right now the big thing is going to be lady alexandra so i expect that this will encourage players to do a lot of arena here coming up try to increase the number the participation there and eventually i think that they're going to try to get people excited enough to then throw you the honors gauntlet which is the version uh, their version of real-time arena and i think that that's what they're preparing you for so you can see here um the window is open and then we can go on and do some battles if we wanted to and it has all the specialized conditions to it i did make a separate video on that so i welcome you to go watch it if you're intrigued to see what the honor gauntlet will entail when it comes to hero rebalancing, I think the bigger one here is going to be Anora. They did change her a little bit, especially when they adjust her, her summons and how much damage those summons were doing. Now you can see that she actually has an increased range. It actually goes two tiles beside her. So she's going to be um, a little bit more menacing to try to get as many enemies down within that AoE area alongside Labor so that is something there and uh, i think that the the ultimate also changed here so now you can see it does 360 percent aoe damage um up to 10 enemies 120 percent damage and extends attack range uh for 20 seconds so this is part of the readjustments that she did go under uh, and then if you sk 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 skill this up you can get this to 150 percent i think is for uh, labor and then you can reduce the cost to 900 uh if um if you do full skill this ultimate here and try to um make sure that you can get that ultimate ripped up a little bit more so that's essentially what that big change is the other big change is that i think um and this is something that we've uh, I've covered uh in another video alongside with uh, uh arturos in wars going on is that we're going to have some heroes that are going to get bond skills this is, uh the big one i think that everybody's going to be intrigued by is going to be hex 
he he'll he'll get a, a little bit of, uh, of uh, let's see if I can uh, find the bond skill unbridled fervor. Essentially, uh, when the fate the hornet is triggered, heck gains an additional shield equal to forty percent of attack for ten seconds. If Twyla is on the field, his cost is reduced by four. This is going to be big, especially if you're trying to cover any PVE content. Maybe, maybe arena it all depends especially live uh, real time arena because there you're going to be at least at this time you're going to be require a big cast of characters in order for you to participate in it so this will just make easier for him to come in to the battle if you need him along with twyla you know, the other big change we're all expecting as well when it comes to heroes is here in the Sunday. So people here in Forerunners already have been using her, especially in some of their APOC uh, 1 teams, is from what I've seen from the leaderboard, because now she can cleanse. She can dispel debuffs, so, uh, and you, giving her range, uh, which is a very good one, uh, you can pretty much cover your whole team if you need to. Uh, the only the only caveat to her is that her ultimate really does take a while to bring it back up. So you're going to have to have other healers to try to help you to make sure that you can survive the subsequent this, um, venoms uh, that are applied to you during the battle. And at least extend that if, uh, if you can to make sure you get into the chainsaw mode. For global accounts, I think the big thing here is going to be the kind of the readjustment that they make to Giselle, especially if you already have her in your account. Uh, it, essentially, what they 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 have done here is that they added a bond skill to her, and this is going to be applicable with Celine. Celine is going to be, I mean, imagine, is going to be the next charge summoning event or fusion type event that we're going to have in the global server that you can match up with her. And essentially, uh, if you look at the at the, at the patch notes, uh, the the viscount, the blast speller viscount, uh, will have the following effect, which is Giselle's first the, the redeployment cost is uh, reduced by two and increases her damage by twenty percent for sixty seconds on that first deployment. And if she does help kill the enemy that you are targeting you're going to gain rage right away so then you can do your ultimate again so that's the the really minor change uh with her she is going to be possibly one of these heroes that you are going to want to bring in early do your damage take her out because her damage will only um extend for 60 seconds and then her ultimate here again only lasts for a particular to get that damage boost only lasts gets that particular uh time so you're gonna have uh 20 percent uh initially from deploying her 20 percent in addition to having the bond skill but then after 60 seconds you lose that damage so essentially is yes, you're gonna have to decide when you're going to bring her into the battle you're gonna bring her to close things out for you especially if you only have one or two uh enemies to deal with or you want to bring early enough and try to get uh at least the early rounds in arena and get them done and then you can bring in the next cast that can do d more damage over the long term i, I am surprised that they may even mention Celine in this version of the patch notes because you all probably won't know what they're talking about in terms of redesigning her kit but this is Celine here and this is essentially what she looks like and i mean her kit i like her kit she has that vampire look and she actually uh, will now add a little bit of a punch especially being a magic fighter to the esotericist what i can tell you about her is that everything uh for her is defined around placing the marks on the enemies placing stacks of the marks because the marks then do additional damage and then you can build on on that damage based on how many times you're hitting the enemy so essentially for those of you that are trying to make sense of what they did to her is that they just gave us the opportunity for her to do more hits so we can apply the marks more often and then the marks will then trigger to deal this 100 percent damage twice to the enemy get the enemies marked again and just keep going in that cycle 
and rebuild it now the one thing i do i do see here in the patch is that they are mentioning the awakenings this is something that arturus and i also talked on what wars going on uh essentially what we said is that given that they are changing uh they, they did change her third and fifth awakening to make her a little bit more uh robust and actually do a little bit more damage is that i think that it's after this the shard summoning event they're gonna eventually add her to the pool so then we'll be able to summon her alongside with all the other characters that we have in the game the big thing for her where uh it was this vampiric uh, sting that was added to her which is the bonded skill which is sell and this i think will make her even more potent than what she already has become with the ability of her adding more marks is because now she will be able to inflict magic damage vulnerability in addition to everything else that she is then offered in her kit but you need yourself for this one one thing to come into place so if you have Giselle, do the fusion uh, she should actually complement her really well and then uh, you'll be able to get a little bit more damage uh, from hers. Uh, the big thing, I think, that is going to really change things, because I have noticed this. I noticed this with my... Uh, when I, one time, it was, he was my A1 Paradis, and I didn't notice him because his rage really built up a lot quicker. So right now, in the global server, as stated, is that you need the radiant erosion to be applied to the enemy that he is targeting in order for you to get, the, to get uh, rage. In this case now is you don't need it. They eliminated that. So now you're just going to be restarting 3% rage. So if you have a one Pradius, he's just going to become even better now in the global server. Okay, the other big thing that is coming, I think is going to be the gear recommendation settings that we have here. So right now I have like a, just a general guideline for me to be, uh, you know, just to easily identify the type of gear that I am looking for. I do kind of go around and look to make sure that there are no pieces that I'm throwing away that I don't want. But you can see here that you can make rules for the two and the three piece set. Um, apparently the lower accounts don't have this. And that is something that we didn't notice here in the foreign industry because most of the accounts are well developed. So I don't, I'm not sure exactly when this un unlocks, but once it becomes unlocked for you, you'll be able to pick up the sets that uh, you, you can farm or that you can uh, forge and then just apply rules that you want to make sure that, uh, that it gets that thumbs up, you know, easily identifiable for you to go look and say, hey, do I want to level this? Essentially, is what it is. Also, when it comes to the gear recommendation settings, one of the things that you can do is you're going to be able to manage your plans. You'll have 20 rules that you can make, or you'll be limited to. As you can see, I only have eight. I don't really need to go into the 20. But uh, one of the things that you can do is share it. So essentially here you said import plan, which essentially means that you can bring in other people's or you can export it, which means that you can share it. So here is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share it from to my guild chat just to give you an example. So there now that is set up. And then if you are interested to see what your guild mates are doing, you come in here. Let me go to the guild chat. See, now it says here gear recommendation plan code is here. You then click on that. And then now you could come in. Let me go back and now here. And then once I go to management import plan and then you enter the code and then everything will, will be added to what you have is essentially what's going to go on. The other big piece quality of life feature that is being introduced and increasing the capacity here of the gear. So you can see on mine here, I have it up to 1600. So I still have even a hundred more that I can unlock. That's in the Pantheon. So the capacity is now going to be 1700 and we do need it with all these new sets that are coming about as well. Now, let me go see if my Bolti battle here has given me any gear. The other feature that I introduced as well here. So now if you can click on this, now you're going to get this little window here. Let me make sure that I am not blocking it completely. But essentially what it is, is that it actually allows you to come in here and roll the gear if you want to do it from the screen and then if it doesn't roll well then you can say i'm going to sell it so that's essentially another feature that they added here just instant leveling uh, if that is something that you want to do and it makes you 
and assist you in deciding on whether you want to keep that particular piece in your inventory or you just want to get rid of it right away. I don't know if this is something that is going to help most of you, but here in the gear plan, so essentially, you know, we have our, our gear plan set out uh, and then we we have designated different sets we form different sets especially for different content so if you have samurai sets you put them in here you can see mine i have different designations for each one of these but what they added was this three feature here where you can actually then sort it so for example here which is for most of the time that i'm doing this if i just want to look at all my rules that have inferno roar sets then i can sort for that also they added the ability for you to sort based on either when you created the specific rule or there's something specifically you want to sort for so for example if you have a set that you know is high crit damage you can sort based on that your sets that is high attack then you can base it on that if you have if you say any type of um, um you know like guardian sets or anything where you have high hp then you can sort by that so that's another little nice little feature that they added it actually then you don't have to really scroll all the way trying to look for the particular set that you're looking for but primarily i usually just leave it on one to me it doesn't really matter i think that what the thing that really helps the most is that you can sort it based on the type of set that you are looking for so if i wanted a soul bonnet kind of set now i were able to uh just minimize it to all those particular sets okay here's the other big feature this is the one that i really is going to be changing end games account or any account that can start farming 19 or 20 essentially what's going to do because you're no longer going to be farming purple um or forging purple artifacts right and whatever artifacts you forge from this that you don't want you can sell it you actually get more mithril back so here in this example here we have 19 to 22 in terms of the gear rates 19 and 21 are the same 20 and 22 are the same the only thing that is different between these two is the 19 and 21 are very focused on defenders and fighters and um 20 and 22 are focused on platform units so that's essentially another thing that is uh, dropping. I do have strategy guides that I created. Uh, if you want to look ahead, uh, I'll put I'll put those in the description of this video. Uh, but essentially, it's going to be just for you to try to make sure that you can bring units in to help you bring these lackeys down before they get to the core. Now here this is just my auto run there's power of dominance on and i just optimized this to speed run it essentially what it is i've managed to cut it down to 220 i think it was if i have the right gear set up so this is why you don't see any tanks here some of you may need that tank okay you're probably going to need the tank to slow things down and then allow your platform units to do the damage but once you have the power of diamond sons, you can bring in AOE fighters. You can get rid of all these guys. And then, of course, you're going to have to keep an eye on the top right here to make sure that none of these uh, crawlers get to the to the boss. Or otherwise, he will be harder to bring down and he actually gains more attack. But this is going to be the th big thing that is coming uh, into the game. And it's going to change how we uh, farm artifacts in the in, in, um we're going to be you're going to be able to get um a lot of your mythic artifacts especially the ones that you probably have had a hard time trying to get into your account and leveled really really quickly especially if you're able to push into 19 and 20. so here let's go to the forging this is not what it looks like or here is what it will look like so you'll have the titan meteorites here this you will only be able to uh, forge ground unit um artifacts that's all you're gonna get and uh with it you're gonna get a chance it's minuscule but you are going to get a chance to get uh exclusive artifacts for, for those ground units and then we have the wisdom meteorites those are for the platform units and again even though it's only a two percent chance it's a small chance but you'll get a chance to try to score some exclusive artifacts from this especially when it comes to the farming the mythic will increase to 28 percent the legendary will be 70 but like i said one of the things that also this does at least with these rates is that it does improve the metrol economy and you'll notice that when uh, you get your account of uh, start farming those particular stages 
The other big change has all to do with Samra. Well, I shouldn't say it's big. They're going to be noticeable, and it's just kind of improving how uh, you're going to be able to see things and also the interaction of some of the heroes that they have uh, with this particular boss. So let's talk about, number one, uh, the, the Apocalypse one. So one of the things that they did here is that they said that they were going to increase... Uh, or excuse me, reduce the difficulty of defeating Semra. Okay, so what they mean by that is not, they didn't nerf Apocalypse 1. It's going to be the same. You're not going to notice anything. The only thing that they really changed is that what they meant was to severely defeat him, so then your guild collect, can collect the double rewards. That's essentially what it is. So they decrease the number of mech fragments that is required for your guild to completely bring him down. That's it. That's essentially what they refer to in that specific uh, sentence of the patch notes. Now, the other thing that they changed here was his advanced evolution, which is uh, Semra's um, uh, chainsaw mode. Uh, so let me go here. So essentially, it's going to be his uh, chainsaw mode that, that they change. Uh, and the reason that they change that is that uh, some of the some of the teams uh, that were uh, being created were really lasting too long in the battle. So what was happening is that there was an error. It's almost like a turn limit error. So once you reach that, it wouldn't let you save your score. Okay. And so one of the things that they did to make sure that you didn't get to those upper levels and the battle ended early is that they increase how this advanced evolution will change. So essentially is at the beginning is at zero stacks, the death, the death sets damage is reduced by 50%. So they are being more forgiven initially. But as the battle carries on, that's when he starts building his stacks and the more stacks he has, the more damage he will do. So for example, we have things like Helga or Nassim that can apply that damage reduction and then build the stacks up, right? And then you get to 12 and then he would tickle you. Well, you'll see that initially. As the battle carries along, those damage reductions will take effect. But even at 12 stacks, You'll see him in slam. You'll see your heroes lose some HP. Is because he's building the evolution of that chainsaw. Essentially, what it's doing is just it's going to try to make you wrap up the battle so you don't get to that term limit and then all of a sudden, oops, I get an error. I can't save my score. The other change that you're going to notice is going to be the HS mode. This is going to be the big one because there are going to be two things that are going to uh, to happen. Number one is that now you're going to be able to see it. Uh, the buff, uh, they're clarifying that a little bit. Now you're going to see it stack, and you're just going to have a number on the right corner to give you an indication of how many of the HS mode stacks are being uh, are currently active on Samra. But the other thing now that they also change with is the Lucius interaction in terms of dispelling the buff. So one of the things is that right now, if you go and we look in the in, in the battles right now in the global server, yes, we get Lucius to remove him, but then when he takes when Samra takes his turn, you see all those buffs come back. So he goes back to his original stack number that he had before Lucius removed it. Now one of the things that you're going to see is Lucius will remove or dispel that debuff and then when he takes his turn now you're only going to see either the one stack come in or if you're further into the battle now you'll see either two or three but you will no longer have that stack anymore so that is something big that they change here uh, in terms of that stackable buff and then after that i'm not seeing any other big changes to samra that you are going to need to really worry about uh the only other thing I guess that I could mention is going to be the Diba or the buff identifiers. Look look for those in heroes like Ingrid and Lucius because in Ingrid it'll kind of give you an indication indication when the overload overload is going to trigger. And in Lucius, you can kind of you're gonna be able to keep track of the demonic stacks. So you're going to be able to then say, okay, I still have a little bit of time before I need to activate the alt, or you can see it and it's getting close to five and said no i need to activate that old right now so those are kind of the little things that you can uh, look for in terms of that uh, changes in the buffs that they have indicated here all right the other big thing that you are going to familiarize yourself is going to be what 
uh, we're now calling an unpolished soulstone. So here is a representation of the unpolished one and then the normal uh, stone that we, we are all familiar with. This will change now as to where you're going to apply your soul stone. So if you get an unpolished one, just use it on heroes that are non-lords. That's essentially the restriction there. It's going to be your decision on who you want to put it on. So here you can see I still have one. I have one in my account. And now I'm just debating on which one I'm going to use it on. I'm leaning Silas right now, A1. But I, I really uh, want to think about it before I do apply this. But this other stone here, now I'm saving it for a lord. That's it. You're going to be able to, uh, th these are going to be uh, very uh, unique. And that is the only type of unit that you should invest it on. Don't invest these on non-Lord heroes. This should just be for your Lord heroes. And then save the unpolished stones for the non-Lord heroes. Now, here's one caveat that I have learned from my Forerunner uh, counterparts here. Apparently, you can use the Unpolished Stone on Emirate and Ajax, even though they're in the Lord pool. So that's interesting to begin with. And I actually shout out a match asking, is that is intended? Is that intended? Because, I mean, they reset Lord P Pity. So um, I'm wondering if this is supposed to be applied to them, but... Apparently you can. So if you have Ajax or Emirate and you want to invest this type of stone on them, apparently you can. So those are the highlights of the global update, right? The big stuff that is coming in. There are some other minor notes. I go, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you look at those. But those are the bigs. That's the content that you can expect. Here is the content that is not coming out yet. I already mentioned one is the Honor Gauntlet. And I think that this here is because they're waiting for feedback and they want to see if they need to revise it before they release to the global server. I did release a video on this and it was a comprehensive one because I did go over the mechanics and what I thought was good, what was really bad, uh, what was bad, and was really ugly about the content. So hopefully there is some reflection there or something that they can change before they introduce that to the global server. So I'll post a link to that video in the description of this one as well. Uh, the other thing that you can notice here is that we have what is really the camp feature. And apparently they're going to hold this back unless they didn't mention on the, on the patch notes. So essentially, it's just a way for you to collect extra resources, essentially. So here, uh, you're going to be able to collect all these ingredients over time so you can have energy uh, to come and get if you need it. You also have things like mystery rewards here. We I have a possibility to get shards. Uh, for ancient or legendary or divine crystals or even if the rng is nice enough just give me a whole one to begin with so just little things like that you can get multi bottles from here and uh and then the other thing that is big about this whole camp feature here that then as you start upgrading it is that then you fully develop the trading hall and then you can get all these resources here once you get all the ingredients necessary to claim this. Now, what's nice about this here is not only you're getting Mithril, but you're getting, um, if the RNG hits, you can get uh, Ancient Crystal, a whole one, or you can just get Red Crystals and then Fragments uh, for the Divine and the Ancient Crystals, which is really nice to have because every, every week that it resets, then you can come in and get more Fragments so you can get some more Crystals into your account. Uh, the other thing that I noticed that they didn't mention is the war room. You know, they kind of clarified and simplified how things are laid out in the camp. So you can see here in the war room, we have the Titanic ruins, we have the Drake Chasm, we have the Tide, we have the Void Rift entrance. Now is this is where we're located, so this is where we have to come in to enter the Void Rift. So they didn't mention that. That's another aspect that is missing. Maybe they're not ready to fully implement that as well into the game. Other feature that is not going to be in this patch, and I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed, is going to be the gear lock feature in Guild Wars. Yes, that is a big thing that is missing. I don't know why they couldn't implement it here. Maybe they're waiting to do it with Arena as well. But this here, this feature was the one that really everybody was waiting for just to simplify life a little bit when it came to gearing and preparing for guild versus guild finally uh, at least in the patch notes what they have uh, said is that they're going to increase the drop rate of the fabrics and the scales for from in the gear dungeons 
positive, right? But here's the thing that is not coming to the global server yet. So let me see if I can get through this without fumbling around too much. So let me go to the gear. Uh, let me go to the foundry. So number one, what I'm going to suggest to you is save this. If you're in the global server, save them, okay? Do not forge any uh, of these T3 gear just yet. Maybe it'll take a month, but trust me, you want to do that. Because one of the things that is missing right now uh, from this patch note is the exclusive gear. So again, I did videos on this, introducing them and kind of, um, kind of giving you a heads up on what you can look for, right? So this gear here is um, uh, this new t new new sets, but then we also have exclusive gear that is specific to heroes or to a faction. So you can see this weapon here is the Setram exclusive. So it gives him a, a boost in his stat. So right now it's not going to let me click on this. So, okay, let me let me go back here and see if I can get like Bierna uh, to show up. So let me click here. Uh, let me see if I can isolate this by the new sets. So you can see here, yeah. So, you, you know, do you have, uh, for example, Helga here is an exclusive, which is attack speed. Essentially what it does, it gives her extra attack speed and damage on top of that. So just little things like that. Uh, this one is not an exclusive. So if I click on this one, here's Bjarnas. So here, Rihanna is getting extra damage from his her Ripper's Crisp and actually even reduces the execution threshold that you need. So that's kind of the, the type of gear that you're going to essentially is going to be coming to the global server. So save your fabrics, do not forge them, and make sure that you farm your gear dungeons this month so you have as many as you can when, that, when this content, the exclusive gear, is finally released to the global server. If you did appreciate the content of this video, please do hit like and subscribe. We'll see you all in the next video.